When you plug in an electric device, have you ever thought of where the electricity actually comes from? The simple answer is a power generating station, also known as a power plant, usually someplace far away. But the reality is much more complicated than that. Generation is only the first of many steps our power takes on its nearly instantaneous journey from production to consumption. In reality, the electricity normally makes its way through a series of discrete steps on the grid, normally divided into three parts, generation, or production of electricity. Transmission, or moving that electricity from centralized plants to populated areas, and distribution, or delivering the electricity to every individual customer. First let us see the various types of generating stations. In all power stations, power is generated by rotation of the prime mover of an alternator. Power generating station is classified depending upon the type of prime mover. Power around the world is majorly produced by coal power plants, hydro power plant, nuclear power plant, gas power plant, diesel or oil power plants and renewable power sources. Coal power stations. In a coal power station there are three stages of energy conversion. Energy is created from coal through burning it to produce heat. This combustion takes place in a furnace with a boiler. The furnace heat converts water to steam, which then spins turbines, which turn a generator to produce electricity. In words these processes seems to be simple, but in reality it takes a lot of efforts to efficiently control the operation of a power plant. Hydroelectric Power Station Hydroelectric power uses falling water to produce electric power. Hydroelectric power plants usually have dams that block water from freely flowing on its normal path. Instead, water flows through a small, narrow passageway. As the water is forced through this narrow passage, the flow of water speeds up and is forced through a turbine, which spins as the water rushes through it. The turbine is co connected to a generator shaft, which turns the generator and creates electrical current. Nuclear Power Plant The primary source of energy for nuclear power is uranium. In a nuclear energy facility, heat is produced from splitting uranium atoms a natural process called nuclear fission. As with other resources, the heat creates steam and the steam turns a turbine connected to a generator. Otherwise we can say that a nuclear power plant is a thermal power station, in which the heat source is a nuclear reactor. Gas Power Plant Natural gas power plants generate electricity by burning natural gas as their fuel. Gas power plant uses gas turbine which burns the fuel gas and convert the chemical energy of the fuel gas to mechanical rotational motion, turbine is coupled with generator. And this generates the electrical power. Gas turbines takes very less time for startup, they play an important role in grid stabilizing as it starts and ramps very fast compared to coal or nuclear plant. Mostly gas power plants will be equipped with a small steam power generation unit known as HRSG or heat recovery steam generation this is known as a combined cycle power plant. A combined cycle power plant uses both a gas and a steam turbine together to produce up to 50% more electricity from the same fuel than a traditional simple cycle plant. The waste heat from the gas turbine is routed to the nearby steam turbine, which generates extra power. Oil or Diesel Power Plant Oil power plants are which uses internal combustion engines as prime mover, the fuel for this engines will be oil. Apart from the above, natural renewable sourks like solar energy, wind energy etc. are also used for power generation. Till now we saw the various power generating stations. After generation, next step is transmission and distribution. Transmission and distribution refers to the different stages of carrying electricity over poles and wires from generators to a home or a business. The primary distinction between the two is the voltage level at which electricity moves in each stage. After electricity has been generated, 
a system of electrical wires carries the electricity from the source of generation to our homes and businesses. These lines can be found overhead or sometimes in the ground, or sometimes combined. Transmission and distribution lines make up what is commonly called the grid. Transmission and distribution are two separate stages or systems on the grid. Usually power generated as such cannot be transmitted to long distances. Why because transmitting power in same voltage causes huge losses in transmission lines. In simple terms, when voltage is less, the current is more and the losses are more. This is due to I square R losses or conductor heat loss. In order to minimize this losses, power generated is converted to a high voltage before transmitting to long distances through electric lines or conductors. When we step up the voltage, consequently current steps down and I square R losses reduces. Transmission is the interstate highway of electricity delivery. It refers to the part of electricity delivery that moves bulk electricity from the generation sites over long distances to substations closer to areas of demand for electricity. Consumers may recognize transmission lines as the larger, taller poles towers carrying many wires over longer distances. Transmission lines move large amounts of power at a high voltage level, a level that is too much to be delivered directly to a home or business. There are a lot of challenges associated with construction and maintenance of power system which consists of generating stations, transmission line networks, substations, distribution networks etc. The most important one is maintaining the stability of grid. In simple terms, in a stable grid, generated power and demanded power should be ideally equal. As simple as it is to imagine, the power grid isn't just an interconnected series of wires to which all power producers and users collectively connect. If you consider the power grid a gigantic machine, and many do, substations are the linkages that connect the various components together. One of the cool parts about our electrical infrastructure is that most of it is out in the open so anyone can have a look. In most cases, the power moving through the transmission system must be reduced to lower voltage levels by step-down transformers in the receiving substations before it can be delivered to a residence or business. Power, specifically the voltage level, sent through transmission lines is reduced, or stepped down, via transformers and sent through distribution lines, which are then connected to homes and businesses. In general, substations can be classified into four. Step up transmission substation. This substation receives electric power from a nearby generating facility and uses a large power transformer to increase the voltage for transmission to distant locations. For example, power generated at 11 kV is stepped up to 220 kV here before transmitting to long distances. Step down transmission substation. These substations are located at switching points in an electrical grid. They connect different parts of a grid and are a source for sub-transmission lines. For example, power received at 220 kV is stepped down to 33 kV in one or two stages before feeding to distribution lines. Distribution substation, these are located near to the end users. Distribution substation transformers change the sub-transmission voltage to lower levels for use by end users. Underground distribution substation, these are also located near to the end users. Distribution substation transformers change the sub-transmission voltage to lower levels for use by end users. For example, power received at 33 kV or 11 kV is stepped down to 415 volts which can be used for domestic appliances. If transmission is the interstate highway of the grid, distribution is the city street. It is the last leg of the delivery of electrical power from generation to the consumer. Power travels on the distribution system at a voltage level that can be delivered directly to a home or business. Distribution lines are the lines many people see along streets. It is the distribution of the power that turns on and runs the appliances we use every day to keep our food fresh, our clothes clean and our homes either cool or warm.